Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Um, if you've been watching the series where Jamie and I break down the hog, you'll guess that I have some leftover bones, ear, foot, uh, and I'm gonna turn that into pork stock. I really like pork stock. Uh, it doesn't get a lot of love out there in the world. You usually see recipes call for chicken or beef stock. I think a really nice, clear, pork stock, so unroasted bones, uh, is fantastic in any of those recipes. And when I say clear, I'm not going to roast these bones. So I'm not gonna bring in any of that roasty, toasty brown flavor into the stock. It's still packed with flavor, but not an overpowering flavor. And it's the kind of flavor where you could sub this stock into anywhere that you use chicken stock, almost. Now, just like the chicken stock I did a week or two ago, I'm gonna use the ratio method that I learned from a French chef in Hong Kong probably 15 years ago. Uh, pretty similar to the Ruhlman ratio method that he delineated a few years after that in his cookbook, which is you take the weight of your bones and then you use a certain proportion of water after. So I've got 2.2 uh, kilos of bones. I'm gonna use 3.3 kilos of water, which is 3.3 liters of water. And we put all of this into a stock pot and the water will just barely cover these bones. So I put it in the pig trotter, in goes the ear. Um, this is the neck bone. I could have cut the neck bone up. I probably should have cut the neck bone up, but I didn't. And then just some assorted bones. Toss that all into the pot. Next in goes the water. Just enough to cover. Now at this point, I don't add anything else to the pot. Uh, I've got it on the stove top and I've got it on sort of a medium high heat. I wanna bring this up as quickly as possible to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So just below the boiling point. You never wanna let this boil at all. Uh, once I get it up to that temperature and I wanna do it really quickly um, to get us through the danger zone uh, where bacteria and other organisms thrive, you wanna get it past that. Once I get it up to that temperature, I'm gonna stick it in the oven. Actually, I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna stick it in the oven. Now, the chicken stock went in the oven for what, five, six hours? This is gonna go in the oven at 190 degrees Fahrenheit for anywhere between 16 and 24 hours. And you're not gonna to have to babysit it. During that time period, you won't need to stir it, you won't need to add any more liquid, the lid is on, it's never going to boil, you can forget about it. And then somewhere in that 16 to 24 hour period, I'm gonna come back and that's when I'll add the aromatics and put it back in the oven for probably another hour. So, I'm gonna go about my day. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so it's been about 15 hours. Uh, the kitchen smells incredible. It smells like pork stock. Uh, absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna take the lid off. I'm gonna put in, at this point, the aromatics. And I've got a very simple mirepoix, onion, carrot, and celery, along with some peppercorns. And I've left the peppercorns whole, and a little bit of salt. And not too much salt, because I wanna be able to uh, tailor this to the dishes that I'm going to use the stock in later. Too much salt now could ruin it down the line. So put that in, and we'll put in the mirepoix. Okay, so put the lid back on, and this is gonna go back in the oven for another hour and a half to two hours. Um, at that point, we should have extracted all of the, uh, the goodness from the aromatics. Okay, this should be done. So I'm gonna pull it out, and we'll give it a stir, and see what happens. Yeah, this is fabulous, absolutely fabulous. So I've got a fine mesh strainer here with a couple of layers of cheesecloth, and I'm just gonna strain out the big bits um, into this jug. Now this is, a, uh, this is a commercial kitchen jug. It is plastic, but it is good up to 210 degrees Fahrenheit. And since we're at 190, uh, everything's going to be fine. So without spilling, Okay, so I'm gonna get this into a bain-marie 
as quickly as possible and get it chilled. You want to get it out of the danger zone. Uh, as soon as it's chilled, I'm going to portion it out into smaller containers and stick it in the freezer. Okay, complete change of plans. I know I said I was going to put this into smaller containers and stick it in the freezer, but I've realized I need to use this uh, in a few recipes over the next two or three days, so I'm just going to leave it in this tub in the fridge. So I thought I'd show you, look at that, look how stiff that is. It is really sort of gelatinous, it's beautiful pork stock. Um, this stuff is fantastic, so I'm going to leave it in this jug to use it. But let me just show you, like look at that. It's complete jelly and it's got a layer of fat on top that is absolutely fantastic. And so what have we learned? Pork stock is really easy to make. It's relatively cheap to make. All of the parts and the bones that you put in here are very inexpensive if you can find them at the right supermarket. Um, it's flavorful and it can be subbed into a lot of recipes where you might use chicken stock, beef stock, or veal stock. Um, so give pork stock a try. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.